it's Wyvern here with another bit of Total War Warhammer 2 quick match gameplay. This time around we are doing a bit of Wood Elf against High Elf action. So definitely one of those rougher matchups with the Wood Elves uh, on the Ash Plains here. And uh, so I wanted to try out a new strategy though because I've, the last time around when I've been fighting against High Elf, I always go with Eternal Guard, but I wanted to try something a little new with uh, the way I laid out my Eternal Guard. So my Lord though, quickly running over the Lord selections, uh, I decided to run a Lady, just a decent Lord all around. Oh, uh, she has okay stats all over. She's mobile on an eagle, so if my opponent bring, goes very heavily into save air, I can escape and just run away. Uh, she does have Prayer of Anathrema, just to make people an easier target for my archers. And then, of course, good old Arrow of Kernis to do some damage to single targets, usually, though also against s some mobs. Alongside her, I did also bring a Spell Singer of Life on a e Great Eagle as well, coming in with Dwellers Below, because I want to try it out and just see how good it can do in... Uh, in a sort of quick match situation, regrowth, and earth blood. So going full all in with the healing. Also did bring a force of power stone just for the heals. And uh, the spell singer, the eagle's actually gotten some improved combat stats, uh, especially for the uh, wizards. They used to have really, really pitiful combat stats, and basically once your charge was worn off, it was terrible. But now it can actually stay in somewhat sustained combat. Well, it won't do well, it can do okay. I also did bring a Branch Wraith. Uh, the Branch Wraith is completely stripped down with just Call of the Woods. It is literally there to provide me with a bit of a melee hero. Uh, the, the High Elves don't really have too much to shut the Branch Wraith down with anyway, unless they decide to roast me with, say, Dragon's Breath, which would be bad, but that's nothing I can do about that, really. Uh, and it does provide that boost to melee attack to all nearby units, which could definitely be a bit of a game changer. So, for my front line, though, I'm running a bit of an, or trying out a bit of a new strategy here by running six units of Eternal Guard with shields, but they are max veterancy, at veterancy nine. So, this does make them cost almost 800, it's about 780 gold uh, for each unit. But they do have silver shields, they have stuff, that the usual 40 armor, all that, but 32 melee attack and 61 melee defense, which is absolutely monstrous. The few units that are here in the center are uh, surrounded by around the uh, Branch Wraith are actually sitting at 37 melee attack. And. Uh, these guys do have armor piercing, so despite the fact that they're intended for anti-large, they can actually perform pretty well against heavily armored infantry. Uh, so against Phoenix Guard, against White Lines of Krace, they will do pretty well. Uh, if you compare their stats to the White Lines, who are actually more expensive, uh, even uh, even stock compared to these maxed out Eternal Guard, they actually do compare rather favorably. And of course the armor is irrelevant because both units have armor piercing. And these guys, with their much superior melee defense, should be able to trade fairly effectively. Then, uh, moving on to the flanks, we do have two units of War Rancher with Azure Spear. These are there to give me some flexible anti-armor, or anti-large support. Of course, high melee defense still, decent melee attack, massive, absolutely monstrous uh, bonus against large. I do believe it's sitting at 23, which is absolutely huge. Not the best of charge bonus, but they're very mobile. They can flex around and kind of do what's needed. Also, they're immune to psychology, so no dragons routing them off, something like that. Finally, a bit of a shooting line down here. A bunch of Glade Grove with Starfire Shafts, of course, uh, to punch through enemy armor and give me some focus fire on if I really need to bring a unit down. For my opponent, a fairly conventional build, I think, all around. He did bring Teclis out here on the flank. Teclis, of course, with most of his spells, actually. Uh, did not bring, though, I do believe he did not bring the Sword of Teclis. Uh, he did, however, bring, of course, Net of a Mintok, Flaming Sword of Ruin, uh, Flock of Doom, and Regrowth, uh, and, of course, Fiery Convocation. So definitely a rather powerful assortment of spells. He does have the Potion of Troy, so he can heal and give himself some, self some resistance. And all these spells are rather effective against Wood Elves in various situations. Plus, of course, he does have Kindle Flame, Wild Heart, and Shield of Safari. So just a very, very powerful caster there. That said, his melee stats are absolutely atrocious, and if I can get the jump on him, I should be able to kill him pretty easily. Two units of Dragon Princes support that, and these guys are a real, real problem for Wood Elves. Because my armor piercing, or they're sort of a problem for Wood Elves, because my armor piercing shooting does not do, uh, does fire damage, and these guys have 74% fire resistance. So ignoring their shields and ignoring the armor, which of course will still have an effect, uh, I'm already doing 70% less damage with my Starfire Shafts. Otherwise, they're just a very solid heavy cavalry unit. And if they can get to jump on you, they can definitely do a lot of hurt. For this front line, my opponent has a whole bunch of white lines of Krace, which, as we discussed, I should be able to trade pretty effectively with using my uh, Eternal Guard, who have fairly, I do believe, better stats overall. They do, however, have a worse weapon strength, so they'll be hitting a little weaker. They also have a worse charge bonus. Then my opponent does have a Noble up in the air, who's just kind of floating around uh, on his Eagle. Interesting choice to put him on the Eagle, uh, because the Noble doesn't, d loses his anti-large bonus and armor piercing when he's put on an eagle. So he's a decent combat hero for sure. But he is, like I said, he is, is a, in some ways a sacrifice. You can see I get some early picks here with the uh, lady just trying to poke away at these white lines of Krace while they're giving me their broadside because it means I'm going to maximum value on the arrows and their pierce. 
Uh, you can see four four models picked off there, six models picked off there. In the back of my opponent has four units of Lothar and Seaguard, which means large units trying to dive in to shut them down. If I try to sh shoot, uh, jump in with the Eagles, they will get torn up very, very quickly. Uh, now my opponent is starting to pepper down my Eternal Guard with his Arrow Fire, of course. And uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to just flex my War Dancers around, get them into maneuver them into position. I do see these Dragon Princes, so I want the War Dancers to be ready to counterattack. You can see my Starfire Shafts in the meantime are kind of shooting into the White Lines, trying to whittle them down. Though. Now, unfortunately for me, White Lines do have a 30% uh, ward save against... They do have a 30% missile resist, so they'll definitely be taking a little less damage. And I shortly shift fire to the Lothar Sea Guard, just trying to punch through my opponent's back line. Here, my Eternal Guard is engaging, just tying down these White Lines, and it should be a pretty favorable fight, especially with the branch right here in the center. I should be able to win there. Unfortunately, though, this flank that was focused heavily by the uh, Lothan Sea Guard is getting beaten up rather badly by the uh, White Lions. Uh, so I'm committing the War Dancers as our spears over there. You can also see that my Lady Art are trading very badly with the Lothan Sea Guard, uh, in no small part because I'm shifting fire to the Dragon Princes, not realizing that these guys actually do have that uh, uh, fire resist, which I hadn't thought about initially. I do also land a nice arrow of Kurnus, getting a another three kills there. Now the War Dancers as our spears should be able to come to grips, perhaps do a little bit of damage before these guys sneak away. Meantime, the Eternal Guard here is doing rather badly. You can see I do drop a Dwellers below over here, though, catching the uh, Lothar and Sea Guard and a little bit of these White Lines of Krace, doing a very, very hefty amount of damage uh, and definitely softening up quite a bit. The Noble, in the meantime, has forced my uh, Spellsinger of Life, who had accidentally flown in there, to route off. And uh, it is definitely a bit of a back and forth fight so far. You can see the uh, Balance of Power is a little bit out of my favor, I think, uh, but it's definitely nowhere near, the issue is definitely nowhere near your side. Unfortunately, you can see the War Dancers did get, take a rear charge, and I've also been getting shot up by the Lothan Seaguard. And the Lothan Seaguard is doing a massive amount of work to my War Dancers. Where you, you can see the Spell Sink of Life is hovering around. Not entirely sure what to do with her. I can't really commit her. You can see the War Dancers are definitely struggling. I'm trying to use them to help break the White Lines, which might have been a bit of a mistake. Could have kept them in reserve to counterattack the Dragon Princes when they go in. The Dragon Princes, of course, cannot trade effectively with War Dancers, but they can. With their charging, they can route me, and uh, that would be a huge problem. On the flanks, though, my, or in the center, my opponent has buckled, and my Eternal Guard is on top, now on top of his Lothar Sea Guard, who sh I should be able to maul. Fortunately, a fire convocation does kind of sweep through and do a lot of damage. You can see the stacked Eternal Guard is doing a lot of work here. Uh, un unfortunately, you can see my opponent is getting a little bit of healing done here on the Noble, who is getting sniped away at by the uh, Starfire Shafts, and of course, they have been softened up a whole bunch by these annoying Lothar Sea Guard. Over here, the Eternal Guard with Shields has been pincered by the. Uh, Dragon Princes, and they are getting beaten up very badly. So they will still be able to inflict some damage on the Dragon Princes, who of course are large, and that makes them a very convenient target. However, they are also about to lose their Martial Mastery, or Martial Mastery, which will be a huge boon for me. Fortunately, the Lothan Sea Guard has really broken up my War Dancers as Azurite Spears, who are of course very, very susceptible to that sort of stuff. And that's one of the big problems for Worlds. While you have very powerful anti-large, it's very susceptible to shooting. In the meantime, I'm just kind of picking away with my Lady, uh, trying to keep my spell signal alive. You can see my opponent is charging in, and I'm trying to save Teclas because I caught him with a nice pair of Anathrama here and I'm simply focus firing him with all of my Glade Guard with Starfire Shafts. I will get charged by the Noble, I will get charged by the Dragon Princes, but this frontal unit of Glade, glade Guard here, while it will get practically annihilated, does manage to get a decent, does manage to so sort of soak the charge up and that means these units can keep firing and I'm going to be able to pick Teclas off. This was a very convenient Lord Snipe for me. And uh, he's a goner. You can see that homing arrow coming in from the Glade to finish him off. And uh, then I will be able to kind of back out, hopefully, with the uh, spell singer and just run away. In the meantime, the branch rate is still very high on HP and just kind of rampaging around doing whatever the heck he feels like. The Glade Guard are doing a decent amount of damage, though these Eternal Guard are going to be goners fairly shortly. And you can see my War Dancers are finally rallying and they'll be able to come back in which, in the 11th hour. Over here, I'm trying to route off these white lines, not realizing that these guys are here because they would have been much better to send against them. And now I'm trying to just flee from the Noble. I, I could actually have probably taken this fight against the Noble uh, because my Glady is actually sitting at fresh. It does look like this has actually been changed. Before the Elvenish Lords would take lose massive amounts of energy from shooting. And she's sitting at fresh right now, which is pretty crazy. That's something you don't usually see. Over here, the Eternal Guard with Shields has gotten caught out by the Dragon Princes, but the Dragon Princes are losing their Martial Mastery. This unit is still barely over the cusp, uh, but a few more volleys of arrows, or perhaps hit a few hits from the Eternal Guard will run, knock them out of Martial Mastery, and these guys have already lost it, so they're in deep trouble. The Eternal Guard here does rally a little bit, and with the branch right there, it can definitely anchor these guys a little bit. Keep them locked in place. And I'm trying to pepper down the Noble now because really I can't do very much to the Dragon Princes. Lothan Sea Guard is tying down the Eternal Guard, but my Eternal Guard is superior to the Lothan Sea Guard in basically every metric that matters. The War Dancers with Azurai Spears are diving in, and uh, despite the decent amount of damage done here against the Eternal Guard, uh, I, and my branch rate does kind of hold firm and allow me to charge in. Over here, I'm trying to route off some of my opponent's troops with the Spellsinger, who is, however, being peppered down and pursued by the Noble. So things are looking very grim. Technically, it's in my favor, but I'm not entirely sure why that is. I do get a lovely pair of Anathrama here, which does root down one of the Dragon Princes, but as my 
shooting doesn't really affect them very much, uh, they can kind of afford to sit there and uh, tank it out against most of these units, even though these are anti large units, of course. One of the fortunate things is that I'm immune to psychology, as the fear could have potentially just broken things up really badly here. I do get a little bit of an earth blood here, which will not heal very much, but it will heal a little bit, and obviously every little bit of HP I can eke out right now would be huge. I'm trying to use my Glady to pick away models on the Dragon Princes, but it's much harder against Cavalry units, it's much harder to get the max value out of those Pierce attacks. So I'm getting here or there, I'm getting a kill. Uh, but you can see, definitely some kills racking up 16 Dragon Princes over there. These Dragon Princes are down to 18 models, and they're actually not attacking the Glady Guard with that still has ammo, uh, which is a bit of a problem for my opponent. My opponent does have some Lothram Sea Guards still around. You can see my uh, Spellsinger is rallying. I have managed to route off the uh, white lines over here, so that's going to be seven more Glade Guard, or Eternal Guard I can pull back into the fray. And uh, things are definitely looking a little interesting. My opponent has a lot of shooting, and it's very spaced out. My shooting's practically all dead, but I do have several healthy heroes. My Branch Wraith is basically full. My uh, Spellsinger is practically dead, so I'm not going to comment on that. But the Glady and the Branch Wraith are still very healthy. So, And my opponent only has one rather crippled Noble. Uh, who I could potentially just pursue. You can see I do get a rear charge in here with the Spellsinger. She does cause fear when she's on the Eagle, so that will help route him. Obviously no terror, which is a little unfortunate, but that is what it is. Uh, these Lothan Seagar are now focusing her, so I'm going to disengage, try to take, a, take to the skies uh, before I get shot down. Very this, this Noble is uh, kind of stuck. He gets on the ground. Eagles have a fairly long, I've noticed, takeoff sort of take off of space, so I do get a surround here on the Noble and start just beating him down. You can see that charge coming in from my caster, who does take a hit in return, but I do have a Glady sitting around, ready to finish him off if needed, and at this point my opponent's army does shatter in what is a Pyrrhic victory as we blob up on those last units. So definitely a very brutal game. Uh, very much, my, one of my opponent's uh, best units there was definitely the Dragon Princes combined with the Lothan Seaguard. The Lothan Seaguard completely shut down my War Dancers as our Spears when they tried to come in to shut down these Dragon Princes and almost delivered the game into my opponent's hands. Uh, so def definitely some good play. Uh, I was definitely very impressed with the way the Eternal Guard manhandled the White Lines of Craze, though. Granted, both sides were softened up a little bit, but the white Eternal Guard, with their massive boost, their melee defense, uh, was just absolutely... Uh, they were absolute champs against the White Lines. They were doing a really, really great job against them. And uh, I definitely think that's a pretty cool strategy you can do with... Uh, afford to do with uh, Wood Elves. But maxed out Eternal Guard, uh, 9 Chevron Eternal Guard, is almost as expensive as White Lines of Craze. They have a significantly better melee defense. They have a bonus against large, so if your opponent decides to go very heavy in the large department, uh, they can fight back pretty effectively. And they will still trade pretty well with White Lines, who are the mid-tier sort of uh, infantry that you'll often see. And you'll often see these guys from the um, come out from the High Elves because they do have a 30% missile resist. It's actually better than, the, say, the Swordmasters of Hoeth, who only have 20% uh, shield. These guys have 30% missile resist, so oftentimes you will see white lines of craze because they can basically cost efficiently beat the snot out of most elven infantry. And the elven infantry that would be a threat to them, most notably eternal or uh, wildwood rangers, get shut down by archers. Uh, but the eternal guard does kind of it can get through the shooting because of its high H because of its uh, high shield value. Because they have silver shields, and then they can slug it out with the white lines. So it's pretty cool, I think. Uh, otherwise, uh, definitely I made some mismanagement with the War Dancers out of Spears. I think I pushed him in too soon. I should have only committed one unit and kept the second unit in reserve, waiting to jump the uh, Dragon Princes when they appeared. Uh, the Glady definitely performed rather well, picking off models on the white lines. It was definitely pretty nifty. Branch Wraith, I think, good support unit. The Spellsinger performed rather well. I have definitely liked the buffs to the Eagle and as far as the combat stats go. Makes it much more than just a fast transport, uh, which is nice. Gladiator did a rather good job, but I definitely uh, had a serious issues against the Dragon Prince because they couldn't pierce their, or they couldn't do a lot of damage to him. I'm not sure if Way Watchers would have been a better idea because I would have had to sacrifice something, either Chevrons or uh, something like that. Perhaps it would have been best to bring, say, a unit of Hagbanes so I could de uh, tear through the Lothan Sea Guard a little faster. Nonetheless, I'm not entirely sure what I should have done. Uh, I definitely think that Dwellers Below I casted might have been slightly wasted. Uh, I might have been better off using more heals, but given how wide the frontage was, the heals were a little awkward. Uh, but yeah, for my opponent, definitely White Lines aren't a bad pick against uh, Wood Elves. The uh, Lothan Sea Guard, um, no, there are no pushovers. Granted, these guys weren't the shielded variant, so they got shot down pretty quickly when I actually got an opportunity to shoot them. Dragon Princess, great unit against uh, Wood Elves, uh, though, of course, if had I been able to more effectively utilize my Ward Answers, that might not have been the case. And uh, yeah, Techless. Techless was a bit of a weak link in the sense that the moment I, the moment he got isolated, I managed to focus him down hard and uh, drop that prey of Anathrema on him and just absolutely annihilate him. And I think that 
The problem is the Teclas is fairly cheap as far as Lorses go, so uh, you don't have to invest in, like, say, the Dragon or anything, and he's still useful, and he can bring all those nifty spells like Regrowth and um, Net, I've been talking, all that sort of stuff. So he's useful in that sense, but at the same time, of course, he's very subtle with Lord Sniping if he gets caught out. And uh, I definitely kind of lucked out, and that probably might have decided the game. As you can see, the losses were very tight and actually a little bit in my opponent's favor. Regardless, a great game to my opponent. Uh, I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe down below for additional content. As usual, guys, I do appreciate you all for watching. Uh, if you have any comments, criticisms, anything like that, be sure to post it down in the comment section below, and uh, I'll read it and respond as soon as I can. Uh, thank you all, uh, and I will see you all in the next one. Why for now?